I'm Jen Kiaba. I'm a photo-based artist here in New York, and today I'm going to be taking you through the edit of a brand new image that I shot in my studio. We're going to walk through each step together here in Photoshop and see what we can create. So this is going to be one of those images where I really don't have a plan for it necessarily. It's just something that I kind of want to play with and see where it goes. Um, because I'd already gotten the shot that I wanted for a different concept and was just trying to see, you know, what other fun things I could get in camera before I lost my light because I'm working with a large window over here and you can see I had um, this stool here that was holding, you know, pieces of clothing, my phone, which I use as my remote, etc. So, um, what I'm going to start with is I always like to use a square format, but I don't shoot square format, so I have to fake it. I'm shooting full frame on a Canon 6D. If I was shooting in a medium format, then we would get the square output right away. Um, so there's two ways you can do it. One, so you can go up to image and canvas size, and then you can change your width or your height depending on the orientation that you've shot in. So you could go to 2008 just to get a perfect square here. Um, you can choose the canvas extension color and you can choose where to anchor your image. So what I was thinking is I want to get more over here on the side. So in order to do that, you would just anchor over here and hit OK. But what this does is um, it really pushes my composition all the way to the side here. And it's really not a kind of fine tune process. So I'm just going to undo that and show you the other way you can expand your frame, which is using your crop tool and you would set it so that it would be a square. Um, there's different ratios in here, so I would want to use the square ratio. And what I love about using the crop tool is that you can see these grid lines here, which help me visualize my rule of thirds. Um, and so what I see right now is I, um, I have the figure right smack dab in the middle of the composition. And that may not be what I want. You know, I may want my composition to be more like this. The reason that I'm thinking that is because the hand gesture here is up to this light source over here and it may be that by pushing the figure off to the side a little bit more it's creating more tension than if she was just smack dab in the middle where it looks more like a dancer's pose. So this may be something that I play with later down the line. For now, I'm just going to pop the figure over here um, actually, let's put the hand right on this line here. So what I like about this is um, the figure is still in this middle quadrant here. Well, quadrant's the wrong word, this middle third. Um, but then this hand here hits the line of the rule of third here, and the where the elbows and the arms are is also kind of playing with that other rule of third. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a color fill layer right here, solid color. I'm going to choose black, hit OK, and because it's above the layer that I was working on, I'm just going to drag it down. And so now what I can do is I can throw on a layer mask, which this is my layer mask tool right here, pop that on, and I'm going to use my brush tool on a soft-ish edged black brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just painting out pieces that I don't need. And as I get closer to the figure, I'm going to need to use a harder edged brush. But for right now, I can get some of my bigger stuff out of the way. So I know that what I'm going to need to do is find another image where I've got a piece of gown here that I can pull in. So I'm really not going to worry too much about that edge right there. And now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can start to see better. And with my bracket tool, I'm going to make my tool, or with my bracket key rather, I'm going to make my brush tool a little bit smaller. I can really get in here. Now another way that we could do this is go to select subject and see what Photoshop is able to isolate for us. Sometimes it can do a good job and other times it can't. So you can see actually it did a pretty good job here. Um, 
it may have some ragged edges that we'll need to clean up, but this is going to make my life a lot easier. I'm going to have to be careful in the hair and then obviously with this piece right here of the veil. But if I go back into my layer mask, make sure you're not painting out on your image itself. If I go back into my layer mask, I can probably, whoops. <laughs> so it's selected the subject. One quick thing to remember is to go to select an inverse and now I can start painting out. And it's sort of hard to see what I'm doing because I'm painting black on a very, very dark color. But I think we can get a pretty good idea of what we're doing by watching the layer mask over here. I'm just zooming out. And you can see I'm being a little bit careful with the edge of the gown there. I do want to see if I can get some of that trailing away. So I'm going to zoom in now and I'm going to deselect with my hand tool by pressing H on my keyboard. I'm just going to get in here and see if I can do some of that fine tuning now. So what's going to help me? I tend to shoot um, a little bit underexposed because I always want to make sure that I don't blow out my highlights. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to bring up my levels a little bit. I may get rid of this later but so I can see kind of where my edges are. You can see that that helps quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my lasso tool and actually I want to use my magnetic lasso tool so it's been sort of stored down here. And I want to see if I can, whoops, I want to see if I can get some of the edge of this scarf in here. And you can see how it's kind of clinging to the edges a little bit. It might be a little bit ragged, but it's a good start. And it's clinging to the edge of the arm pretty well. Although I'm seeing where my select subject tool was not perfect. I could get around the face here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this piece of veil or not by the face over there. All right, so now I'm going to go back in hit B, my brush tool, and using my bracket key, I'm just going to bring it down because I don't need it quite so big. And then deselect there. And then you can see if I'm really careful, I might be able to use my soft edge to kind of blend this a little bit. And I'm going to blend it up in here too. And Compositionally, I don't think that having this chunk right here by the face is really the strongest choice that I can make, so I'm going to just paint that out too. Of course, I'm painting on my levels layer, so that's a problem. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hit select, reselect. We're going to get that back in there. Paint it out. That's what we were looking for. Command D to deselect, and now that we're painting in our mask, we're actually going to get what we want there. These kinds of things are very common when you're painting in on a lot of layers, so if you ever do something like that, don't feel bad about it. It happens, and it happens to my students all of the time, and it's better to, to, to catch it right away and be able to fix it. Um, especially painting on your image itself versus painting in your layer mask. That is a, a big no-no that we've all committed. And uh, the sooner you can catch it and correct it, the better. Because the last thing that you want are stray paint marks on your image when you were intending to mask something out. All right, and I think I'm just going to get this edge in here too because I don't like how it sort of... It's a, a slightly less um, opaque piece. I kind of want that harder edge there. All right, now with my hand tool, I'm just going to sort of explore my edges. So you can see I'm, I'm um, toggling back and forth between my brush and the hand tool. So on your keyboard, just toggle between uh, H for your hand tool and then B for your brush. And that's a nice way to kind of just go through your image and explore your edges a little bit. And then zooming out where you need to. 
grabbing my hand tool, dragging to see, okay, I definitely need to work up here. Another way that we can try to see if we can um, make this a little bit easier for ourselves is with this magic wand tool. You could use the quick selection tool as well. Um, holding shift down, I'm just selecting more area. Whoops. And you see we already selected too much. So I'm going to go back a little bit and see. Well, we'll work with this for now. I've selected my hair, so I have to be really careful. Um, but I think with the hand, we can do some good work here. So just go in, paint this out. And now one thing that I've made very difficult in my life, just in general with this image, is that I am shooting dark hair on a dark background. And I won't tell you that that's a no-no necessarily, but I will tell you that it does make life just a little bit harder when you're doing work like this. So I'm just going to zoom in here again, grab my hand tool with H, drag up here, and I want to get this little feather piece out. So using my bracket, just kind of making a smaller brush. And I'm still using a slightly soft brush here because I really don't need my edge to be super hard, I don't think. At this point, I might need to clean it up uh, with a harder brush over on my fingers, but because this is a sheer piece of cloth that I'm painting with, it might be okay. Hand tool, drag over. And yeah, let's use a slightly harder brush now. So I'm just gonna bring my hardness up here on the slider and I'm gonna use a smaller brush. So using my bracket to size it down. And I think I'm actually gonna toggle into white now to paint in the finger a little bit more. So by using X on your keyboard, you can toggle your palette over here. And so black obviously is painting things out, white is painting them back in. And the reason that I like to do this, whoops, the reason I like to do this is for stuff like this, <laughs> where I can hit undo, um, but if you're using your eraser tool, there might be times where you're not able to go back far enough uh, to correct a mistake. And so I consider using the eraser tool to be uh, destructive editing, whereas layer masks are considered non-destructive editing. Um, and so it's always better to be non-destructive when you can. So let's just clean this up, painting in white here along this ragged edge and fixing it there. Hand tool to drag, painting out black. All right, so we're gonna zoom out now and just see where else I need to go. I've painted right through my face, so let's fix that. I didn't catch that before. Oh, stray marks. All right, let's just go a little further to see how much I missed. And now with white, just paint that out. And I think what we can do here, so hair is always hard because you want to try to maintain the softness of the hair's edge. Um, and here I just, I want to avoid any haloing. And so there may be some stuff that I'm going to have to go back and correct with my hair later on. So here we're just going to paint some white back in. fix where the select subject just did kind of a crappy job. Soften these edges up a little bit. Because the nicer our edges, the more believable our composition will be. And the less we have to hide our work with techniques like texture. And I am a big fan of texture, but if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I like to hide bad editing with texture and it's been one of my resolutions that I become less reliant on that and so that's why we're kind of going through here just doing some cleanup and I can see definitely down here this looks terrible so we're using that white brush again with slightly hard edge and just bringing back what we can looks like we lost quite a bit down here too so I may go further than I need to. Yep. See, I'm bringing back in some of that background because I want to see where is the line of the arm that we lost so that I can go back in and just blend that out. Mm, 
oops, wait. And you will develop a uh, a working style, I'm sure, where you're going to have your hand on your one hand on your keyboard and the other hand either on your trackpad or on your tablet. Let's see. And that's how I keep kind of toggling back and forth between brush tools and also in my palette here. It just makes it so much easier to be able to edit this way. I don't know what I did before I learned keyboard shortcuts. I know what I did. It took much, much longer to do an edit than it does now. Okay, these fingers aren't terrible. They're not amazing though. So we may or may not have saved time with the select subject technique, but it was worth a shot. So let's see, we need to clean up this elbow too here. I'm just going to use a larger white brush because I know we lost a lot on the forearm there. And then I think we can clean up this armpit here. So toggle back to black, get my brush, and we're going to make that a little smaller to get up in there. All right, let's zoom out and see where we're at. Not terrible, not terrible at all. There's probably room for refinement later, but for now, this is okay. So we're gonna zoom back in, hand tool, drag it down, and let's just do a little bit of cleanup down here at the bottom, now that we can see it a little bit better. Okay. That's not bad. So anytime I've completed cleanup like this, I always like to hit save. Um, and we will just call this red silk blindfold. I didn't spell it right, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got a kind of a working start here. Next step that I'm gonna do is a little bit of retouching in here. Now, one thing that I like to do when I'm retouching portraits is I like to duplicate the layer that I'm gonna be retouching, but because um, all I'm gonna be doing at this point is taking safety pins out, I'm not gonna bother with it. But if I was retouching a headshot, for example, um, part of the non-destructive technique that I like to use is duplicate and then name the new layer retouch. And what that gives me is an ability to look at where I started from and where I ended up because sometimes it's really easy to over retouch portraits, for example. So having a retouch layer, again, just makes it um, easier to kind of see your before and after, be able to bring your opacity down on the retouches if need be, and just have that frame of reference and the non-destructive uh, original layer saved. But I'm going to delete that for now. And I think we're just going to use the stamp tool. So that's this tool over here. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to get it. And right now I have uh, no hardness at all, which is okay, I think. We'll give that a shot and see if we can get these safety pins out. So option on my Mac, I think it's Alt on the PC, gives you a point to use as your source. Once you've defined your source, you can start retouching. So I'm going to zoom in even more and use an even smaller stamp brush here because I've got this fold I want to be careful of. So I'm going to redefine my source and just bring this here and then I'm going to define up here and bring that down there. I think we've gotten rid of that one pretty well. Well, we've lost some of the fold there. So click that. Let's do one more redefine and see if we can bring that fold down. Well, that's a little off to the side there. Let's try one more time. Good enough. All right, on to the next. All right, let's zoom out and see if we have any more safety pins. Not bad, not bad at all. 
All right, so I'm gonna hit save one more time. And now what I wanna start doing is building the scarf here. So I have this other image where I was pulling the scarf a little bit and I'm just gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it in over here. Hit V to help drag. And we can see that I was covering my nose in this other one. So let me bring my opacity down and just see how we need to sort of change the size here. Because what I want to do is I want to extend this a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do, first we can turn this off here. Although I do think that eventually I will brighten that up a bit overall, but we're going to keep it off for now. So hit T, Command T to transform. And I'm going to hold Shift to keep my ratio the same. And that seems like it might be too much. So I'm, I've let go of Shift and I'm just going to squish this now. And my nose got giant. So my intention with this image is to have the scarf kind of going off the image. One of the issues that I'm going to face, I think, is that the scarf is going down in this direction. So I think I need to tilt this a little bit more in order to get that effect. And I will also want to make sure that my fingers aren't interacting with the scarf at all. So let's throw on a layer mask, hit on our brush tool, and let's start painting some stuff out and just see what happens. And you know what? That levels layer is going to come in, in major handy at this moment. So I'm just going to get rid of what I accidentally painted out there. Because now I can see all of those dark edges a little bit better. And the fingers are not hitting, which is great. I may need to stretch this out a little bit more. Maybe not. We will see. And I also want to make sure that I don't lose the head too much here. So I wonder if I hit Command T, oops, don't unlink the layer, and squish this down even more, if we can get that to blend a little bit better. So let's get rid of all of this extra data up here that we don't need. And I'll need to clean that up in a sec. All right. So I'm going to use my polyagonal lasso tool and just see what creating a straight line here does for us. And then paint that out. I like it. I think we need to do a little bit more over here. Let's see how we kind of got up in there. Let's get rid of that and maybe see how that looks. Not bad, not bad at all. And let's just turn this layer mask on and off and see how much I have on the bottom there. Not a whole lot. It looks like that's pretty much it. Okay, and I'm going to turn this on and off too. So I just want to paint some of it out on the face now. So I'm going to make my brush larger because it's going to make that soft edge even softer. Ah, and see what's happening now is that it's, I've got an angle here, slightly different angle right there. And so I'm creating shadow that I don't want. Whoops. So we're going to have to blend this back into the face a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is lower my flow and opacity and see if I can gently start to bring this back in a little bit to blend without it being too obvious. Like that looks pretty decent to me. Let's turn this on and off. Yeah, I like that a lot. So we still get it kind of wrapped around the head, but then it also starts to kind of come off the face a little bit too. So let's go over here 
and do just a little extra cleanup and I'm also going to want to get the thumb out of there as well. So this I want to get out of here. So I've clicked from my layer mask to my regular layer on my stamp. I'm going to define my source here-ish and just bring that down. And I'm going to do the same thing here because there's like a little edge that bugs me. Not bad. Hit save. So now what I need is I need a piece of fabric right here to go off the other end. And then this may end up being where I decide that I want to um, change my composition so that she's not like in the in the side here too much maybe we want to push her one way or the other but for now let's see so I do have this piece from the image that's already open this one also looks good looks like we've got a number of them to choose from this one looks like the one that I want though you get to see a dorky picture of me whoops Let's open that, not rename it. Okay, you can see me trying to like take a picture with my phone here, not like a selfie, but using my remote on the phone. I'm like trying to look through the blindfold and uh, it was uh, not working very well. Whoops, missed it there. So just using the lasso tool to capture that copy and we're gonna paste it here. We're going to do the same thing because we're going to need to make this a little bit larger. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this layer under the main figure here because I want that on top so that I can see this line here. But I'm going to do Command T again and we are going to transform this to see where it needs to go so that we can do a nice blending job. And that doesn't look terrible. This is going to be difficult right here. I can already tell. So I may need to extend this up here and actually paint out what's around the hand. So let's just give that a shot and see what it does. So I'm gonna put a layer mask onto this layer, but I'm actually going to blend out on my main figure first. So that being this here. Let's bring our opacity and our flow back up because we don't need to try to blend too much. That's actually looking pretty good. So one thing that I'm seeing here that I'll probably need to clean up um, with my stamp tool is these shadows right here from my V flats. These are like um, the spines of flats that we've built in my studio to help them be in the v-shape um, and I'm just using them flat against a wall so I can see in the slight opaqueness there where that could be something I have to stamp out so I'm just making a mental note of that for later because you can see where the tones change so could be a problem maybe not we will find out now I'm going to go down to this layer here that we just brought in and clean it up behind the hand because we don't need that we don't need that and it may be that it doesn't bother me so much that that shadow change in the V flats I am getting rid of um, this little layer of tool down here by the way, this is tool as a blindfold, not a silk blindfold. I just named it silk blindfold because that was the first thing that came to mind. But this is, I believe it's tool. And so if we get rid of just that little layer there, that may end up solving my problem. That is one of the biggest things about just doing these compositions in general is problem solving. Now, I don't think I can get rid of it there just because of where that's going so we will need to bring some of it back I've got to be aware of my lines here 
So this too may need to be brought back in in a way that makes sense for the shape. Like I like this sort of organic edges that it has, but I'm wondering if we do our polyagonal lasso tool again too, if it's just going to make our lives easier. B, clean that up, just get rid of that. Not bad. Yeah, that's probably going to be something we'll need to fix. So, mental note made. B. Okay, let's zoom out and just kind of get a perspective on things. So there is an issue with the hand there, so let's use that point of reference here all the way to here and just see what we can do with that. So if we get rid of this and get rid of that, that looks pretty decent. The reason that I like these straight lines is that it gives a sense of tension to this scarf, like it is being tied sort of taut, which is kind of part of what I want, you know, this sense of like something being tied around you, blinding your perspective. So let's see. So some of this is on this layer and then some of this is on the person layer. So if we go in, I see areas in the body we need to clean up there too. So we can kind of do this here. And I see that little nugget there we got to get. So I just changed my layers and now I'm going to have to be very careful with my fingers. But I want to keep that line as a reference there just so that it it's a believable straight line. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. So if we get rid of our levels, yeah, we can see that even still, this line here may need to be dealt with. Or I might be able to just um, burn it in enough that it's it kind of fades into the darkness. So that might be the tactic that I decide to use later on as opposed to going in and doing heavy retouching. So um, just something to think about, but I want to clean up that arm really quickly. So let's go in here, hit B, and let's just get that little elbow pit. And I'm going into the elbow pit a little more than I need to because I know I can bring it back. But when you have like those curves that meet there, it's always tough. And it looks like we lost quite a bit of that forearm there. So let's just kind of bring more back than we need so we have a reference of what we lost. Okay. Let's hit save. And I think for the moment, and this is just for this very moment, I'm still liking the composition because it's creating this sense of sort of wandering through the darkness. It kind of reminds me of the Minotaur where there is this, um, I think it's a red thread that helps the, um, the characters move through the labyrinth. So um, I, I like it for this moment. We'll see if I decide to move it around. If I do decide to move it around, let me just show you what that would look like. So I'm gonna select the layers that I'm working on and so they're all selected. You can group them by hitting Command G if you want. I'm not gonna do that. And then you can literally just with your, um, your move tool or by hitting V, you can kind of move things around. And so this is also kind of an interesting composition here. We've got her closer to the light source and then all of this darkness in the back, which we could kind of pull this piece of cloth further. The thing that I feel like with this is that it creates an unbalanced composition because you've got all of the information here and then just so much darkness, whereas this 
creates information to look at and so we've got some sort of like dynamic movement in the composition and I feel like this works a little better. Now if we put her completely center, which I think that's about there, um, it works. It's okay. I don't hate it. Um, I do tend to center a lot of my compositions, so there is this part of me that kind of wants to play with it being off-center. Um, again, this sort of feels like more of a lyrical dance versus this, um, but that's just personal preference. I don't think that there's anything wrong one way or the other. So I don't remember if I hit save or not. I'm going to hit save. All right. So now what I'm going to do is let's just turn off the levels layer. Because what I want to do is I do like how this dress sort of fades into darkness, but I want to see if I have um, another piece where I didn't lose too much of the edge of the dress. I might have to pull it in from another shot from a different shoot. And that's totally okay. It's all stock that is fair game. <laughs> can see me trying to get my my shots to line up and everything I got frustrated trying to shoot through the blindfold here we go let's open this one all right open image lasso tool oops and we're on the polyagonal lasso tool so just hit escape let's go back to our regular lasso tool and I actually really like this drape right here. I might just pull in more of it to use. Oops, I missed that piece there. Instead of deselecting, I could have just hit shift. So let's try that again. I have a very small um, old tablet I have yet to upgrade. And so that's why sometimes it's like it just goes right off the edge. Okay. so. If I pull this in, unfortunately what I've done is I've um, undone all of that stamp work there, but this is kind of pretty. I need to make it taller because it looks like I was in a different place when I shot. But I like that line. You see that? That's just this really pretty drape. So we need to place this in a place where it looks like it makes sense. All right. So that, compositionally, I quite like. We may have to transform and right click and warp some of this just to see if we can get it to play nice. And so that we're not sitting here all day trying to do an impossible blending job. So let's see what that looks like. Let's see if I can clean up that line here. It's not terrible. It's interesting. So let's continue to get that edge right there. And I wonder if we use our magic wand tool. Yeah, that's going to give us a nice edge that we can then clean up. And in fact, if I go back to my magic wand tool and hit shift, boom. Alrighty. I'm going to hit save. I can see that this piece right here isn't perfect but I'm going to call it good enough. And we're going to just edit out our little um, safety pins again. So we zoom out, hit save. And now what I want to do is I'm going to again turn off that levels layer here and I think I'm going to give myself a curves layer um, and just 
kind of doing the same thing, but what we're doing is just bringing our contrast points down. So we're moving the shadows into grays and the highlights into gray as well. And then I'm going to throw contrast back in here, kind of see how I feel about it. And it feels a little extreme in the muddiness. So we're going to bring the shadow point a little bit more close to the black and then bring highlights up a bit more. Not bad. Okay, let's toggle this on and off and see what we think. So what I like is that it's defined some spots nicely, like this shadow here. Um, what I don't like is I've created more hot spots here, like on the hand. So the hand is more focused than this. So kind of just bring that back down. And what we can also do too is if we really want to kind of fine tune things is we can go in with our brush on low opacity and start to paint out areas that we feel like are just a little problematic. So just painting that out a bit here, painting that out a bit, painting this out a bit, and this too. Now another thing that I've noticed is that I have a slightly bluish tone in my whites. So there are a number of ways that you can approach this. I probably could have approached this in camera raw, but what I was just doing was placing objects at that point. So what I'm going to do right now is take a look at my color balance and see if I can get some of those highlights out of the blue. So if we throw more yellow in there and a little more red in there, do you see how it's changed that a little bit? Um, it also has added some orange into the face and in the skin. So, I mean, it looks like there's a little pinkish there to begin with. Not the end of the world. Now let's just see if we add some red and yellow into our shadows. I already like kind of how this is going. I like that a lot. So I could probably bring some of the orange out of the skin too. So we could either go into the mid-tones and maybe throw some blue or some cyan into the mid-tones there. And let's just see what that looks like if we toggle between these two. Not bad, but you know what I'm also seeing is that it's really changed some of my red. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do the same thing that we did with our curves layer is I'm just going to use a low opacity brush and start painting out some of the effects of that color balance layer. Let's see if I like it a little bit more. I'm only painting out about 20% with each stroke there. So you can see it's just sort of light gray. So I'm not undoing everything but that way I'm able to keep the richness of those reds. Now another thing that I love to do in my compositions is I love to really saturate my red. So you can do that in a couple of ways. You can change the uh, quality of your red by playing with the yellows, for example, in it, or you could really like create a bluish red by, by going down like this. I like, um, I like yellow reds and orangey reds, um, so like you can bring the cyan down, play with your magenta a little bit. I like that a lot. This is interesting too. But note, it sees that there is red in the skin too, so it is changing the skin. And you can change the black point, the shadow point in your red. I think we're going to bring it up. And I always like to just toggle on and off and see, like I really like that pop. Um, another way that you can do it is with hue and saturation. And so you can go into your reds and you can just really saturate your reds. Um, if we turn off the selective color, I think that that gives us a clearer look as to what that looks like. I think that it's less fine tuned at the moment. I mean, you can really kind of go in and play with it. And I love the hue and saturation. Um, tool, but I like what we did with selective color, so I'm just going to leave that. And I notice now that I need to bring back some of the hair. So let's 
And I also see where we're getting an interesting shadow here. So I want to work on the hair, but I also think that we could just see if we can get this edge here that I was saying was okay before to be better. So I'm using a low opacity brush again, but I think that that's helping me just kind of do a soft blend there. Much better. All right, now we're gonna go into our curves layer and start to see if we can bring some of the hair back without losing, again, that effect that I like. So with my black brush, I'm just gonna paint in a little bit here and a little bit here, just so we can get a little bit of highlight. Now, another thing that I can do, let me put this back, this sort of popped out. Um, another thing that I can do is a dodge and burn layer, which I think would be kind of fun to sort of help the body fall into shadow a little bit. So I've created an action for it, but the way that you can do it manually is new layer, mode soft light, I like to call it dodge and burn, and then fill with the 50% neutral gray. Now I've mentioned in another video, why wouldn't I just go and do a dodge and burn tool on something? There's a couple of reasons. One is that I have a number of layers here on the body, and if I were to just use the dodge and burn tool directly on the layer, I would have to go into layer after layer after layer and do that. Um, but another thing is, is that I don't like to create effects directly on a layer, like painting on a layer. I really like to have that non-destructive edit, and so by having a dodge and burn layer, I'm creating all of my edit on its own layer that can be infinitely adjusted in the future. So keeping that low opacity on my black brush, I'm just going to see if I can get the edges of my scarf to kind of fade there. Fade it out a little bit here so that the line isn't quite so harsh. And we're going to do the same thing here because I remember we did a slightly harsh line with our polyagonal tool here as well. And now if I toggle to white, I can see if I can bring the hair up just a little bit. And see now I'm sort of bringing it back a bit, maybe a bit too much here. All right, and so now you see we've created these stray marks. So one way to combat that is just to go in with a gray brush. We're just gonna do 129, 129, 129. It's pretty close to what we need and we're just gonna paint that out. And so see, by painting that neutral color back in, we've basically undone the, um, the dodge and burn. And so you can use these three colors now to do all of the dodging and burning that you need, which is really, really nice. So we're going to have some of these edges fade into black too. I want it to really feel like she's sort of emerging from darkness. It might be a bit extreme. We'll see. And I really want to get this side of the body too, to feel like those shadows are just sort of releasing her. That's a bit much. Let's go back into our 50% gray. And actually, let me toggle so that my white becomes my gray. Let's just bring some of that back there. Because I've basically, there we go. All right. And I'm just going to do a little bit more black on low opacity, very low opacity, just right here too. All right, and so again, I like to just toggle on and off to see what we've done. And I think that I've made her a little too skinny. So let's just bring some of this back. We'll do about 50%-ish, just because we've gone a little crazy. There we go. Put a little more meat on our bones. Alrighty, so I sat with this image for a little while last night. And, um, you know, sometimes I think it's really important to create space for yourself with a project because when we're too close to it, we just don't really see where it could go or what its potential is. And so that's what I did last night. I just sort of sat back and rested my eyes and my brain from this image. and. 
I realized that it it wasn't enough for me. Like I really I've created a lot of images where it's just a figure on a black background and that's fine. Um, there's a lot of symbolism that I like to play with there, but this figure for me really felt like it was completely lacking context. And so, you know, the beauty of the black background is that you can let the viewer kind of imagine the context, you know, if, if she's wandering through a really shadowy environment or something like that. But I felt like I, I really wanted to create something. So what I did is I started pulling in different backgrounds that I had shot for stock and was trying to see what worked for me and then what didn't. And I ended up finding an image that I shot last year that I really liked. So I'm going to share that with you. So this is an image that I photographed in Mexico. And I really liked um, all of these candles everywhere. And so what I decided to do was just drop it in and stretch it out a little bit and start playing with various things in the image. So you can see right now, obviously, it doesn't match very well. Um, and I've already got my layers in over here, but we can see that this is sort of what this looked like. So what I did was um, I looked at it and I'm like, well, okay, so it doesn't match right away. That's okay. I understand that that's going to be part of the process. So I go through and what I start doing is playing with my various blending modes to see if anything might work out of the box, so to speak, especially on this black background that I have. And, you know, because we're working with such a dark color fill as my background here, it makes sense that it wouldn't work just immediately. Um, and so I ended up actually weaving these on a normal blending mode, um, and I duplicated the layers a little bit. But what you can see, so I'm going to turn off the one that I brought in, you can see that I darkened things quite a bit, and I was using my layer masks here to try to start to blend stuff out that didn't work. Um, and I'm planning on, you know, kind of starting to bring some of this down here too. But just to give you an idea of what I did, I moved this candle up. So if I turn these off and this one back on, this candle was down here and I just felt like it didn't give my character that I was using here enough space to really move around. And so instead, I just decided that I was going to use my lasso tool and drag it up. And you can see if I leave this one on here, you can kind of see where that edit is. Um, and then I started to blend out areas that I felt like I really wanted to play with light fall off. And I also threw on a lens blur. So in the original image, everything is a little bit better in focus just because I shot with um, a smaller aperture. And it's, it's hard to tell what what aperture this body was shot on just because of the fact that, you know, the body is completely in focus, right? But I wanted to give a sense of things kind of fading away and, and create some space for the figure. And so what I did was I just threw a lens blur on the background so that we got a little bit blurrier here in the background. And I painted out some, some spaces and I added some shadows to other spaces. And I'm going to need to um, start really grounding the figure now. She needs a little bit of shadow down here. And really, I have to play with where the light is going to um, hit her so that this is more believable. But I felt like this was a really good way to start to give the figure a little bit more story. And so I just wanted to share with you where this image went because it's... Um, Again, it, there's nothing wrong with creating on the white background or the black background, you know, um, that's something that I love doing, but sometimes it just feels like it's not enough. And I feel like if I group these together here, just so that we can turn them on and off easily, I feel like 
um, this creates a better story than this. I still really love this. This to me is, is really fun, but it's just, I, I feel like I get um, so much more out of this image here. So I'm really excited to see where this goes now that I've created a space for my character to live in. And I just wanted to share with you, you know, if you don't have spaces that you can take your models into every single time you shoot, it's okay. Sometimes you can bring your camera with you on adventures and find really interesting spaces, photograph them, and then bring them in later and you know, create a composite image where you have now created a space for your character that maybe you shot in the studio or you shot in your yard, like I did on another video, where you can create a space for them to exist in. So I hope that this inspired you and I can't wait to see where this image goes and how it comes to life even further. I'll see you on another video. Bye.